Ah, like Here, that. Here's an example of an input. Okay. Now you need to convert it to, make sure you also convert it to a number because it has to be a number. Okay. That will go before your while loop. Okay. Then you have a while loop that you go through and start the while loop at zero and go through as long as the while loop is less than or equal to 10, it's whatever variable you use, and then multiply the number that they enter by the value in the while loop, the zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I understood, thank you. All right. Um, you wait, you all sent, I'm at all these practices, I'm at you sent, because last week I tried to at which find them where you like it shows all the practices you sent. Um, if you it, let's let me if you go into D2L and I'll just pick one of the class sections, it doesn't matter. The second thing right after the survey is the links to the examples and below that to the Zoom sessions. Okay, I found them. Okay. I'll have them done. All right. I just want to let you know because I'm actually probably best to get some feedback from you before I submit them because I was afraid if I did, they might be incorrect. Okay. All right. Um, anything else before we get going? Um, well, about Lab 29, though. All right. Let me bring it up. <clears throat> I've got Lab 29 to kind of work, but it's only asking for one movie instead of keeping keep asking. Okay. And that one, let me find, okay, somewhere. Yeah, I'm having the same problem with it. I can get it to ask twice, but then it stops. I've only got it to ask once. Oh, oh that's interesting. And the movies, is it a preset list that we have, or is it? No, it's, it's whatever movies you want to enter. Oh, okay. So, so if, say, if you were the one entering the movies, it would print out the movies that you enter? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, good. I got that part down then. And there's no limit until you put the number zero in. Which lab was the movies? 29. Thank you. Um, I'd throw out there one thing that helped me was putting quotations around uh, the zero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you, yep. if you're just you have checking to. for a zero as a number, that would be somewhere I got. We did an example, and I'm trying to find it. Let's get into the open. <clears throat> oh, also, uh, Wednesday, is there still the regular 12 o'clock meeting for the Wednesday portion? I, I think this Wednesday it's 1030. 1030? Yeah, okay. I just wanted it to... It alternates between... Uh, 1030 and 12. Okay, I just wanted to hop on here okay. uh, right quick and ask before I finish it up and submit it. Okay, here, here, is, here is one uh, where we're just asking for a number. So we're, we're actually asking for a number, but, and so I'm converting it to an integer, but it would be something similar asking for, for the movie. And you, again, your, your loop would end not on a number, but on a uh, string of zero. Okay. okay. So that, that's 32 on it. And we have, I guess there's actually a couple of iterations of it, slightly different, 31, 32, uh, different ways. That's where we also showed you the continuing break. Um. Another question, not about this, but about the extra credit for
for the ACM meeting. Yeah. Uh, you are also doing the extra credit for that, right? Yes, and they sent, they sent me a list of attendees. Okay, because they also told us to screenshot the um, list of people there just in case they didn't get everybody. Yeah. Um, which I did in case, obviously, yeah. they didn't get us. Yeah. So, uh, um, if, if you want to email me that screenshot as well, that's fine. Okay. Uh, and they, um, they did send me an email with a list. Okay. And um, my lab 17, you never graded it. Was it late? No, it was actually like a week early. And I've not graded it. Yeah, well, I sent I, you an email about it. <laughs> well, it, anything anything that's not graded like that, if it is in there, will not be graded till the last uh, till during finals week or the last week of class. But it will I, be graded. Yeah, I don't know why okay. I skipped over it. I'll go through, and as long as it does not show late, mm -hmm. or you have the if it is late and you have the uh, a code for late permission. Okay, yeah, it was um it was actually early. I it was due the thirty first and I submitted it the twenty fifth, I think, of March. Yeah. I'm not sure why it didn't get graded then. It should have. It, it might have been right around the time that all this started happening. So Yeah, yeah but I, I, I don't grade anything until after the due date, so if it was early, so I don't know. But I'll Okay. I'll look. Okay. Okay. And um you haven't started submitting um attendance records yet have you what do you mean submitting attendance like um grading the attendance so in the grades from like nothing, 13 no, nothing will go in d2l on that okay nothing goes in d2l on that all okay. the attend the attendance is all kept on a spreadsheet okay cool i was just making sure yeah so okay. i was having trouble finding anything non-covid coronavirus garbage related for my es so I didn't submit one Sunday. I looked for like an hour and nothing seemed appealing to write on. So I just didn't write one. Well, missing one's not gonna hurt too bad. Uh, missing three. Yeah. <laughs> well, even that, if you look, that's still 45 grades, about 40, 45 grades, 47 grades. So a couple's not gonna matter. I just got burnt out looking at over everything because everything was like stupid coronavirus related. Yeah. Well, there there were a couple of other things, but yeah, I'm get I'm so sick of this coronavirus stuff. I've ran the numbers. I've I've looked at these the CDC numbers, and as always, the CDC has been totally wrong, which I didn't. I, I kind of expected. Uh, they're, they're, they, they have they have a bad reputation of being able to deal with numbers. They need. To Maybe hire, they just got be in control. They yeah. They need to hire a couple of statisticians. Um, but that's that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Uh, the, the news. I've just I I have actually. I guess sun, Sunday was the first time I've been on Facebook in over a week. And the only reason I'm going on Facebook on Sundays now is because that's what I have to, I, I'm the one that uh, streams our church services. If it wasn't yeah. for that, if it wasn't for that, I, I'm not even, I'm staying away from all that because it's just gotten so ridiculous. <laughs> um, all right. Um, thank you for the, uh, feedback on that i just need to figure out how to get it to ask for more than one movie yeah well if if you look if you look at this one the zoom 31 one uh it should help you help you through it because that one we were asking for numbers and so it should be it should be a real easy uh, uh modification I didn't put a continue on mine. Is it and it and it works just fine? Yeah, yeah. Because if if you look, I I did I did that one using a break, a continue, and just an if on the append. I I did okay. twenty nine through thirty one. I gave different ways of doing it. So gotcha. the twenty nine one, we we checked to see if it was zero. 
and then appended actually 28 i think we appended the ended up appending the zero to it and then we went and modified it and showed three different ways of not appending the zero uh, is there any way that i can share my screen and you can give me direct feedback on what i have before i finalize it sure let me stop my screen If you didn't use the continue, you might want to check how many records you got in your mm -hmm. file yeah. or whatever. Because if you don't Please. use it, either an if or a continue, you usually end up with the zero as part of it. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Let's begin. Yeah, as soon as I stop sharing mine, you should be able to share yours, and I've stopped. <clears throat> Eventually, they're probably going to uh, come out with some way of two people sharing. That'd be confusing. Would it be all right if I show you mine, sir, and I'm actually see and you take a look and see what I got? Okay. Um, you really only need one input. I did. I put one in. No, I'm, no I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to you yet, Derek. Sorry. Um, if you just if you just have them input the movie and you look at Y, which is your movie name, if you use your while loop using Y and just put quotes around the zero to make it a string, you should be able to use it with just a single um, sing, single entry. Okay, so that's where I went wrong. I need yeah. to put single quotes around the zero. Yeah, put the single quotes around the zero to make it a string because if you, if you compare a string to an integer, it will never be equal. You might want to look at line 28 too. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, yeah uh, your, 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 um, your actually your list of pen needs to be in the loop. Okay, I'll yeah, put your that list, back in the loop. Yeah, if your list of pen is not in the loop, then it is only going to write whatever the last thing you entered. Like I guess what you're seeing is the list is the blob in the uh, print statement in the bottom. Uh yeah, yeah, the list of pen on uh, just below the print statement. It needs to be in the loop to create your list. And it's your list that you want to, pr to print out at the end. Okay, and the list is whatever movies that is in input, and it's yes, not the list pertaining the, to a set list. Right, the list are the movies that you input, and then after you exit the loop, you want to print the entire list. Question. Okay, and you wanted that line by line, right? No. I don't think it said line by line, did it? I yeah. think it just said, uh, huh? Didn't it just it say print per line. list? Huh? Print a list of movies, one movie per line. Okay, so then you, after, in that case, after you create your list, you want a, a loop, a, a loop afterwards to print the, print the list itself and iterate through in the line at a time. So there would be the while loop to create the list and another while loop. <clears throat> <clears throat> or for loop probably to output the list. I sent you a uh, private message to show you my code. Is that going to be acceptable or am I going to count it off for that? Um, well, I can't see my, go I can't see my chat while sharing. he's, Thank you very much for while the, he's uh, input. Yeah, sharing the screen. Yeah. Uh, where'd my chat go now? All right. Uh, Thank you, sir. And y'all have a great night. All right. Okay, I'm looking now. Uh, I think that would be okay. Yeah, I mean, it works. Yeah. But yeah, the, the way I have the movie list in the print statement, I was like, that's the way I would normally code that, like, that's how I yeah, I mean that 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 also is fine. Yeah, that that's that'll that'll work as long as it prints out right. Yeah, it does. I've tested. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, there's a lot of ways of doing things. I've, uh, I, you, you'll you'll kind of laugh at this. On Saturday night and on Sunday, I did my own um, coding in Python, and I started messing around with Pygame and stuff. And so far, I have a guy who can jump around and collect coins. I think I'm going to call him Yario. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Who's um, next? I had a quick question about, um, I, I wasn't able to attend last Wednesday's Zoom, and I didn't see a YouTube video posted on your playlist. It's not? Hmm. I I'll saw one that had been see. deleted off the playlist. Well, I had a couple of other things that didn't show up from my engineering programming too. So I'll, I'll look and see, but it should have been there, but from Wednesday you said? Uh, yeah, it was from Wednesday. Okay. And I could have mislabeled it too. So I thought I'll look, uh, sit, actually send me an email because by the time we finish here, I may have forgotten where, what well, I may forget about it. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> okay. Others? All right. Let me close some of these windows. Last week we were looking at reading files and we looked at reading CSV files, CSV being comma separated values. And that's one of about four very common other than just straight text ways of transferring data from one program to another. <clears throat> Another one that is very popular is JSON, and, uh, and there's also XML. We're not going to get into the XML because the parsing of it is a little more difficult. A JSON file looks like a dictionary in a way, and it can have a list in it. <clears throat> so what I've got showing here is a JSON file. It starts with the curly brackets, just like a Python dictionary. And here we've got a dictionary name colors colon, just again, like a Python dictionary. <clears throat> And in this case, there is a list or what appears to be a list in it. So we've got a dictionary named colors. That is a list of colors. And inside that list, we've got some dictionary items. So it's, it's sort of a nested, but it's not an exact list type. So here we've got one dictionary item, so to speak, but notice it is not a true dictionary syntax. It's close. <clears throat> and so what we have here are a bunch of colors in a list because a dictionary name can't be duplicated but if that dictionary name is part of an item in a list, it can be duplicated. And so there's some rules there. And, and what happens is with, when you try to import that data, if you just try to import it and manually parse through it, you're gonna run into possibly some issues. <clears throat> so, they have a JSON import library. So if you import JSON, 
then what you've got are some different methods and functions that will allow you to work with that JSON data. I have that <clears throat> JSON data called colors that I'm going to read. You can also have the JSON data uh, hard coded into your program, but that kind of defeats a lot of the purpose of, of, of it. So here's my color JSON file. So I'm going to open the file just like we've done before. A file handle equals open and then the name of the file and I'm opening it for reading. And there are a couple of methods or functions that go with JSON. There is the JSON load dot load and there's a JSON loads and the difference is how they how they uh, work the JSON loads is more of a function type <clears throat> and the syntax is a little different but both will do the same JSON load is what I typically always use to read it and then it's going to load that JSON file and create a Python dictionary from that. Now, one of the things it does is verify that this is a valid JSON file. And if not, it gives you a traceback error. And if we were doing error handling, we would look at that. And I'm going to get an error. And it gives me <clears throat> this traceback. Ultimately, as I stroll through, before it looks at the um, JSON load library, it tells me the problem is here in line 16, which is what I knew it was. And what it's actually telling me, if you ever get this, you're pro because decoding all, most of this is, a real problem is there's a problem in the JSON file, but the very last line, the error message tells me in the JSON file, line 56, column three. So if I come down and look at line 56, there is an, it turns out there's an extra comma. Usually if there's a fail there, there's either an extra comma or a mismatch of curly bra uh, braces or brackets. So in this case, it was that extra comma. So if I get rid of that comma and run the program. Oh, could you please roll that one up as soon as you, I'm not going to pull it up the once I get rid of the comma, if I come back in here and run the program, now it should run. <clears throat> and what it has created here is a dictionary for me. Now it's taken out all the extra lines and those, and it's validated. And more than anything else, what happens is, or, or what, ha what we get is that the JSON load takes that JSON file, makes sure it is a valid JSON file, and then makes the, cha the minor changes needed to make it a uh, dictionary in Python. Once it is a dictionary, we can do anything. I just printed the whole thing, but we can do anything we could do, uh, do with any other dictionaries. So if I printed and what did I call this data? So if I print data, square brackets, colors,
then that should print, and I need that in quotes, that should print essentially close to the same thing, except it will just print the list. So notice the outer colors part of the dictionaries there. Now, inside that list, that list happens to be a list of uh, dictionary items. So if I were to check indexes, I can find, say, let's say the length of data colors. And again, I need the quotes. And it tells me there were six items in there. And if I go back to the color and were to count the number of colors here, here's item one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it said there are six of those. Now, <clears throat> To go beyond and process this file more, we have to know that structure. So you have to be familiar with the data in order to know the structure. And I could, in a loop, I could go through and actually let's do this. Um, let's create a for loop for X in data colors print and let me just print X each time and we get that pause that happens, happens occasionally do the recording And notice when I do that, I, that I get six dictionaries. And I could go through and drill down in each of those or drill down into X and get the colors. And, and we'll, we'll do that one. Let me save this and let's go one step further to show you how you'd go about drilling down. <clears throat> If I had said, say, four Y in X, where X is now my, is my uh, dictionary. And say, I want to print X and let's do category. And you can see in all cases, category is hue. Well, I don't, some of them it's value. So as it went through each time with X, it looked and say at whatever the category value was. So in some cases it's value, some cases it's hue. And let's see what else was in there. Um, let's do code. And code is going to be another list. So let's clean this up. Uh, Uh, 
Okay. Um, Well, I'm still getting curlies under it. Let's see what. Oh, what's. I wasn't thinking that I was using single single quotes on not everything. So now, there I was able to pull out the hue and the value and drill down to any item and I could I could drill even them farther down and get the RGBA and the uh, and or the hex value of any of these if I wanted. So this gives me once I've got it in this essentially nested dictionary that it originally comes in, I can drill down as long as I understand the structure of my data. And that's one of the things where JSON data is structured. That's one of the weaknesses of XML is it is less structured. And so that's why the parsing of XML is much more difficult. But there is a way we can bring in data that's in JSON format and we can manipulate it and we use the, we, we, if it's stored in a file like in this one, we read the file and then we use the JSON load in order to parse that and make sure it's a valid JSON file and convert it into a proper format for um, Python. <clears throat> now, we can also go the other way. And let's say I have uh, some uh, data. So here I've got a car. And this car is a uh, dictionary that's got two cars in it in this case. And each car has nested inside of it a dictionary. So there are two cars in it, car one and car two. I could have instead made that a list and worked with it instead of naming a dictionary. So, but I, there's a couple of different ways you could do it depending on how your data is. What I wanna do in this case is I want to, instead of reading, because I've got my data in and how I ended up with this uh, data, who knows? I, it could have been input. In this case, it's hard coded. It could have been user input. It could have been reading another file. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> but if I want to, I can write that to disk. And I'm going to introduce you to a slightly different way of opening a file for reading or writing. And this is with the with statement. So the syntax is a little different. It says with, and then I'm going to open it the same way I would do just an FH equals open, but then say as, and then I've called it car.json, but that would be the same as the file handle. Then everything pertaining to that is indented. In this case, there's only a single line. <clears throat> The difference between it and opening it the way we did before is if we're writing, we have to remember to do a close. 
we should have done a closed reading too, but especially with writing, using the width as soon as you exit that indent on the width, it automatically closes the file. So you don't have to remember to close it. As soon as you have a command that's now no longer indented on the width, it will automatically close the file for you. And that's a nice thing to have. So if I now run this, oh, I've got the, in order to write it, I use the json.dump and the JSON dump says, take my car, my variable name car, and write it to that file handle, car.json, and convert it to make sure it is a proper JSON form. Make sure it's proper JSON form. So if I run this now, in the bottom, it just says finish. Just says finish. But up here in my files, I now have car.json. And if I look at it, there's that data. The dictionary lines, the two items. And so it validated and then wrote that data. So I can write data that is in um, Python format and I can convert it to valid JSON there. Now, if I put this extra comma here, it should give me an error when I run it. Hmm, it didn't that time. because this technically right now is not valid JSON, but it went ahead and took it. It did not, okay, it didn't write the extra comma. So it cleaned, it did clean it up. I would, I thought it was gonna give me an error, just like when I tried to read it when it wasn't valid, but it didn't. <clears throat> so, I can write using the JSON dump and that will get write it to the file. Its cousin is JSON dumps and JSON dumps, you only provide it the car name and what it does is return a structure but doesn't write it to a file. So the JSON dump is used when you're writing to a file. Okay, so there's a, another way of, or there's a way of taking dictionary data that is in Python form and convert it in to, converting it into a valid JSON file for writing to disk. Questions there. Could you please pull that back up? I wasn't finished typing that all in. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to upload that it to the screen. Okay. Or, or to I'm um, to the share rather. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So again, I've got the car in. I've I've written it. I could have I printed it. <clears throat> Here is the syntax of the JSON dumps that would create the JSON file, but not write it to disk. Um, what I'm gonna do is, now I've, I've, I'm gonna go ahead and read that file we just created. So I've used the width for reading now. So I've opened that file that we created before and wrote to in the previous, and I'm going to use the same method, just using the width to read it and then just print it out. So you can see that I can read it back. And here is that dictionary of those cars. 
So you can go in both directions. Unless I tell you, you can either open files using the file handle equal, or you can do the with open. Again, the nice thing about the with open is the first command, or as soon as you exit that indentation that's part of the with structure, it automatically closes that file. That saves you as a programmer from having to remember to close the file. And we'll do one more. Now, as you see that I'm just cutting and pasting code because the time it would take me to type these structures would be a while. So here <coughs> I've got a car one that is a list. <coughs> and then it, it's a list of these uh, car dictionaries. And so here I'm using the JSON dumps, plural. The JSON dump is used for writing to a file. The JSON dumps can convert the data, but doesn't require you to write it to a file. So there's only one thing in the parentheses, and that is the data you want to convert to a valid JSON form. We're not going to really see any change in this because this is already valid, but it will validate that data. <clears throat> so if I run this now, it prints out that data in, in a valid JSON format. And if I go in here and add this extra comma here and run it, it fixes it and removes the extra comma, that making sure it stays a valid JSON structure. Now, once I've got it as this variable, got it as this, in this case, list, that's valid JSON, I could write this, I could write car1 to a file, the car1.json to a file, without doing the extra step, but using the JSON dump, if that's what I'm going to do, just makes it a shorter process to do that. Okay. So any, any questions on getting JSON in and out, and more importantly, being able to drill down if we know the structure of that file, to pull out individual items. <clears throat> I'll just look. I to, I'll just look up. I'm actually. I've listened to everything you said, and I've got. I'm actually all of it memorized. But I'll also watch your video and also do the practices you already talked about. Okay. Okay. Questions on the JSON. What I'm going to do, I, I sent in an email I sent out, I'm going to, I'm going to try and get them posted tomorrow. There's going to be about three or four more labs. They will deal with reading and writing data. They will be bonus. You don't have to do them, but if you do them, they're bonus points. Uh, if you if you do it so as uh, I think it was Michael said he'd missed a couple of executive summaries okay you uh, missed a couple of executive summaries you go in and you do a couple of those one or two of those bonus and you know that makes up for missing an executive summary um, 
that way again with 40 right now 4700 points in terms of labs if you mess up a two or three or four labs that's not going to hurt much but even if you messed up a few of them if you do a couple of those bonuses that's going to uh, pop you up there and uh, that lab grade is half your grade <laughs> Is this JSON stuff going to be on the final? You will have to read and write, read and or write to a file on the final. Uh, more than likely, it will either be supplied as CSV data or JSON data. Uh, and I say that whether you have to read or write to a file will depend on the survey results. Um, if the survey result, depending on the survey results, if we have a question and answer part, the, this stuff may be part of the question and answer part. I've still, I've not made out the final yet. I'm waiting on the survey results, but you de definitely need to know how to read and write data. It's your survey or the school survey? That's mine. Okay. Now, it's a survey, so I don't see what any individual responds. All I, all I see is the totals. So when I go in there and look, and there are four Python classes, so it's the accumulation of the four Python classes. Um, <clears throat> the only thing you really have to answer if you take the survey is whether whether you want all programming or a combination of programming and uh, qu question and answers. The other questions are just I, I decided to throw them in there and I will share the, the results with my department head. But yeah, th that's that survey is really the only reason for it the main, well, I was going to have the one question which you wanted on the final, and then I decided, well, if I'm at, you're doing a survey, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. I think it is five or six questions. Is there anything on the survey about the time length? No. Okay, because I mean, just being honest, I've tracked pretty good the before the COVID and partly thereafter, but since I've had these kids at home and stuff, right. I'm drowning in these last two weeks so hard. I'm trying to juggle five classes and I'm, I understand. You know, um a little well, extra time to figure things out. Yeah. You know, if it's gonna be weighted heavy towards things that yeah. were post COVID might kind of help. Well as far as what will be on it Obviously, you have any questions are going to be uh, since the midterm, or primarily since the midterm. You have to know how to use inputs. You have to know how to print and format. <clears throat> I'm not going to ask you a question say, about formatting, but I may give you something and you need to know how to format. On the programs that you have to do, obviously, you're going to have to know how to do those. The programs, there will be questions that will require if statements. There will be program questions that require while loops, possibly both. There will be functions on it. Um, the length of time you will have, again, will depend on whether it's just programs or it's programs and questions. <clears throat> Finals are generally set for, um, uh, fi finals are generally um, set for two hours. The Dean has told me I have some, we have because of this some leeway. And so if, depending on the programming part, I may give you a little more time. 
Um, I have one other question too. Um, this is just my first year um, at Northeast, my second semester, but mm -hmm. um, this will be my first summer we're coming up on. Um, and it's my understanding pretty much the computer sections are shut down for summer classes. Uh, That's correct. Right. Uh, is there anything that goes on during the summer that's computer related to somewhat kind of uh, help keep you engaged or maybe help prepare for fall or you know what I mean? Like, is there any kind of uh, thing? There is, you, there is usually not. Um, the reason we don't, other than INFS 1010 and spreadsheets, we don't offer things in the summer is where they'll actually, uh, they, they will let, even though they're not supposed to, in a regular some spring and fall, they'll let a class go with a full-time instructor that's got less than 18 students. And they will actually, if it's a second year class, let it run even for less than 10, which they're not supposed to do. Summer, we get no funding from the state. Summer, 100% of our funding for classes is, is tuition. So for that, they have a hard rule that a full-time faculty cannot teach a class that does not have 18 students and an adjunct cannot teach a class without 12. <clears throat> With that limit, it makes it virtually impossible for us to get a, anything but INFS 1010 to run in the summer and have enough students. Of course, on top of it, this summer, everything being offered is online. There are no in-person classes this summer. Oh. <clears throat> About this fall. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, if you want to stay involved, there is a potential, if you want to just volunteer some time, for any of you, if, this is an if. They allow students in the new building once we're in there. My hope is that they're still saying they're going to give us limited occupancy in the new building early May. <clears throat> I'd re really need to get um, equipment into the mock data center that we have um get the servers up and configured the switches we think have been ordered maybe possibly they said they were and they weren't and they checked it up and we're going to get it ordered last week so hopefully the switches are ordered they will not be in for the, some of them in 45 days other 89 days from the time they get the order um once they're in, we need, we're going to need students to help us with those as well. And I can send out maybe before the end of the semester an email to everybody and say, hey, if you want to be on the list of, pos of being no notified, if we can let students in the building to help, you could possibly do some volunteering there. Um, it will be great experience for networking and cyber defense and um, um, Drawing a blank majors. Uh, programming? Not pro what will the new building have? Not, pro not so much for programming majors, but there will be some programming there, but not as much for programming majors. Uh, Sysadmin majors. Um, we have a mock data center. That mock data center is going to have our infrastructure for the, our five specialty classrooms. It's also going to have racks for students, especially, for example, networking students in server class, Cisco students to get hands-on on gear. <coughs> and the infrastructure part, two of the servers are blade servers that are $65,000 each. And the infrastructure switches had we paid retail on them, uh, the six switches 
and one firewall retail would have been two hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars. Our 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 uh, cost on them is about one hundred and ten thousand. So these are not low end switches, home switches. These are commercial business switches. Um, twenty thousand dollars for two of them are twenty thousand dollars each after the discount. The others are over ten thousand each after the discount, and the we had hoped those would be in gotten ordered and be in before the end of the semester. Of course, we wouldn't have got students there, but we were hoping for our Cisco and Capstone students to actually get them configured before the end of the semester. So having students help with it would, you know, would not be a bad thing. If my daughter's preschool's back in action where I'll have childcare, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be there for it. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, how, what kind of access once this all's lifted this summer, it may be they say faculty have access, but no students allowed. <clears throat> It may be that faculty and student can have students there, but they have to sign in, sign out of the building and be supervised. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen on it. Uh, I'm just hoping by fall, everything is back to normal. Yeah, me too, sir. Yeah. I just wanna hurry and get this day over, set this virus over with. Yep. <clears throat> okay. All right, any question, other questions? No, sir. I just want to get the labs done. Yep. Anybody else? Folks, we're almost over. You guys have hung in there. So, I mean, that's, uh, um, that's better than some classes uh, in a division meeting. Um, there, are, there are faculty that have went from 20, 25 people in class to five attend, still attending and all. And I still have, I've got about six people that have not been turning in work out of about a hundred. So, you know, I, I have been turning guys. in my work. I just, I'm not going to, was just I'm not going to take a look, make sure it was correct. Or not. I understand, Derek. Understand. I'm just saying that for everybody, this is for everybody. I appreciate you hanging in there. Um, well, we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and end it if there are no other questions and I may need to talk to you later on tomorrow, though. All right. Quick Bye. question. Okay. Bye. Database concepts. Does it not? Do they not have it in the fall at all? No. Um, it's a spring only. <clears throat> there is discussion because of in some of the classes the number of people that did late withdrawal and things. There might be a possibility that at some point after finals, they may a decision may be made to add addition, some sections of some of these spring classes that had a very high with late withdrawal rate due to the change in circumstances. I'm all I'm saying is that is in discussion. I do not know if it will happen or happen or not. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Computer science one and client side programming is the two classes that I'm getting into in the fall. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions for the third? I know you're not looking at my degree works, but technology and society maybe? If you still need, need your humanities and things, the other is, let's see, uh, uh, you need client side programming as well. Yeah, I've got that one and then computer science one. Oh, then you want server side programming. Um, server side and i'm trying to remember what the actual name of it is um i've got introduction to scripting languages okay sur survey of That's physics intro to scripting languages that would be it okay that is php would you suggest going ahead and getting the 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 technology and society out of the way before i do three programming <laughs> languages or programming or computer classes at one time well if you are if you are a programming major those are the normal three you would take your fall of your second year 
Uh, those are fall only classes. So if you don't take those in the fall, it puts you behind an extra semester semester. Gotcha. If okay. for financial aid purposes, you need 12 hours, throw the tech and society in as your fourth class. Perfect. All right. I really appreciate that. Right. Along those lines, I actually have a question myself. Um, okay. I have five classes left till graduation. Okay. Um, two of them I signed up for next fall. One of the options that I could have taken next fall and only had two left for the spring semester of 2021. Uh, one of the classes I could have possibly you know, squeezed into next fall would have been capstone. Okay. Is, it's last on my list. Is there a problem if I get into capstone too quickly? You, if, 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 if all you have are two classes left, it would not be a major issue. We do have people do that, but, but Dr. Farrell has to permit everyone into capstone. So she, what she would do is she would look at your transcripts and she would make a decision in your case. Um, let her know that you are a night student. Okay. And she'll probably let you in because um, Capstone is at night in the fall, day in the spring. Oh, okay. Okay. So because you work during the day, I'm sure she'll probably let you in. Gotcha. Well, that creates a big problem mm -hmm. if I don't put it in the fall. Yeah. And then that creates another problem because the two classes that I've signed up for in the fall, one of them is on Monday, and so is Capstone. Okay, which one is the one other one? Uh, it's let me put my degree works. Okay. Both of them are with uh, Anderson. I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. This isn't something we need to be yeah. recording.